Hi everyone, in this video we're going to look at storage unit handling when doing stock transfers using Computec WMS. I'm going to do this demonstration on the Android version of Computec WMS, but it does work in exactly the same way if you're using standard Computec WMS on a mobile device like a scanner or on your desktop. It's just that the interface has a slightly different appearance in those cases. So as I said, we are going to work with storage units when doing stock transfers. And we're going to walk through a sort of semi-complex stock transfer where the inventory will be organized like in this diagram. Our stock transfer will involve 20 units of four different inventory items. We're going to take some items from an existing storage unit, which has two child storage units. We're going to take the entirety of one of the child storage units, but only part of the content of the second. Then we have some loose items. For some of those loose items, we're going to create a new storage unit while we're recording the stock transfer. We're also going to include some loose items. They're going to be separate in the stock transfer. And then in the destination warehouse, we're going to put the inventory in several different bin locations there. So we'll start off by selecting stock transfer from the main menu. And I'm going to base our stock transfer on a stock transfer request that is already in the system. So here I'll choose from transfer request. And then I'll choose the document from this list. And then I'll get a list of the items that we need on the document. We can see here that we've got this list of four different items and that we need 20 units of each one. Now I've got some of these items in a storage unit, which I can add to the stock transfer. To add an existing storage unit to the stock transfer, I just press the more button. That will bring up this tooltip and I'll choose add SU, which will take me to this screen. Then I'll select existing SU and then I can either choose my storage unit from this list or I can scan the SU or the SSCC barcode. If I wanted to add the whole storage unit to the stock transfer, I could also scan the barcode from the document details screen. But if you only want to add part of the storage unit, which we will do in just a moment, then you have to scan the SU code or the SSCC code from the list of storage units screen. So let's just scan the barcode to select the storage unit we want. Right, so I've selected my storage unit that I want to take some inventory from for our stock transfer. As you can see, my storage unit includes two child storage units. From this first child storage unit, I'm going to take the whole storage unit, so I will tap on that so we can see it contains 10 units of non-active item 2 and 10 units of non-active 4. So I need 20. So I'll take all of these and then I'll get the rest of them from somewhere in a minute. Let's press on the select all icon and the selected items will turn green. Um, and now you have the option to take just the items or also take the container. If you want to take the container, you should press this um, move SU button with this icon that looks like a box. If you're going to leave the container and just take the items, then you would tap on this items only icon. For this storage unit, I'm going to take the whole thing, including the container. So I will just press move SU and then that will bring us back to the screen which shows us the contents of the parent storage unit, i.e. the two child storage units. And the child storage unit that we've just added to our stock transfer, that one is shown here in green. Let's now go to that second child storage unit. Let's tap on it and we can see that the second child storage unit, it contains non-active item 1 and non-active item 3. Um, since I need both of those items, I'll tap on select all and the items turn green. But for this first item on the list, I actually only want to take 10 pieces from this particular storage unit. So I'll tap on the item and then here on the next screen, I can define how many pieces I want to include in the stock transfer. I'll enter my quantity and then save. And then we return to this screen 
where you'll see that the item that we're taking a partial quantity of is now blue. And as before, the item for which we are taking the whole quantity of, it's green. I'm also going to take the container for this storage unit. So I will tap on the move SU icon and we'll end up back on the storage unit details screen. And we can now see those two child storage units that I'm pulling from the master palette here in green. Now we already are taking the child storage units with their containers. So I'm actually just gonna leave the master palette container. So this time I just want to take the selected content, not the container of the parent storage unit. So I will choose items only this time. So that'll take us back to the document details screen for our stock transfer, where we can see what inventory we have already added to our stock transfer. So 10 units of each of the required items. And also the storage units are listed down at the bottom. We've got three because one is the parent storage unit and two are the child storage units. But we're not finished yet. We still have to add 10 more units of each item to our stock transfer. So let's move on and do that now. For the next lot of items that I want to add to the stock transfer, I also want to create a new storage unit in the system that will include some of those items. So this time I'll press on the more button and add SU when the tooltip appears, but I'll choose to add a new SU. This is the storage unit details for the new storage unit. Let's add some items to it now by pressing forward to get to a list of the items. I'll choose this non-active one. If you remember, we still need 10 of those. And we also need 10 units of non-active item two. So add both of those to our new storage unit and at the same time to our stock transfer. We can also add loose items to our stock transfer. So we can have a mix of storage units and loose items. Let's just take the rest of the units that we need of non-active three as loose items. So another 10 and we'll add them to our stock transfer as loose items. Now, I still need 10 more units of non-active four for my stock transfer. And what I want to do is to add those items to that new storage unit that I created a moment ago. So I'm just gonna scan the SU code to get back to that storage unit. And um, I pre-prepared this barcode for this demonstration, by the way. Um, and then I'm going to add the 10 remaining units of non-active four to that storage unit. Right, so now we have selected all the items that we need to include on in our stock transfer. We can see on the document details screen that we've got 20 out of 20 for all four items. So now we can proceed. I'll press forward. And now I can choose the destination warehouse for the items on my stock transfer. I could also choose the bin location at this stage if I wanted to put all the items in the same bin location. But actually, I'm gonna put them in different bin locations. So I'll press forward and I'll get a list of all the items on my stock transfer. Um, I'll deal with the loose units of non-active three first. I'll take all 10 of them. Um, I'll select the quantity here, put them in bin 0301. And then I'll take the first storage unit, assign that to bin 0302. Then the next storage unit will go to 0303. And finally, the last storage unit to bin location 0304. And um, now we can see all the items on the stock transfer. They've been put away in the bin. So I'll just proceed by pressing forward. I don't have any remarks to add here. So I'll just save the document. And as you can see, our stock transfer has been created in the system successfully. 